What's up guys? So in a previous video called four years as a react native developer, I shared just some of my experience and thoughts building apps using react native. And it's been about a year since that was released. So I thought it'd be a good time to give an update five years as a react native developer and talk about things that are different from back then. And for the most part, there's not a lot different, you know, like what I went back and watched that video and I still think pretty much the same that I uh, think back then as I think now. Um, the only th couple of things I never mentioned in that video that I've been thinking a bit about recently is, uh, well, first off, I think the idea of writing great code or really good code is uh, is not something to get caught up in. <clears throat> and I, I say that because, I mean, you shouldn't write, you shouldn't write bad code, but you, you should write code that's like just good enough. Because for the most part, if you're writing, uh, let's say you're building that from scratch, you don't even know if it's gonna be something that people are interested in. And you have no idea until you release it. So you need to get, get it just good enough to release and then see if there's any interest in the app. And then once you have an app out, the same thing still applies, but on a feature level, you release a feature and then maybe there's uh, some interest in it and maybe the, the users use it or maybe not. Well, what happens is you, the, one of two things, you either write that code and then that's it, you never touch it again, and it sits there for years and years. And in that case, it doesn't matter if the code's perfect. It does its one thing, it's good enough, that's it. And in the other instance where it gets used a lot, and uh, you end up iterating on it, because you get feedback from users, uh, things change, you know, APIs change all the time, especially in the mobile world. So you're always having to update things and, and change things around here and there. So you're going to be changing that code uh, a lot, frequently. And if you're kind of caught up in this, like I ha it has to be like really good before I can release it, um, it, it's going to be a real time sink, a real distraction. And I think most of that probably comes down to like being a little afraid of releasing something that's not good because um, it could be a reflection of you as a developer, or it could be a little worried about having to deal with the ramifications of having crashes in production or issues with you know, bugs and things like that. And um, to that, I'll just say, well, those things just happen, you know? And yes, you should try to minimize that as much as possible. And probably as you write code in React Native, you get better and better at seeing those things and you write less uh, you know, error prone code. But <clears throat> don't let that don't let that stop you, you know. Basically your good enough code just keeps getting better and better. Good enough becomes more good gooder, more good becomes better. <laughs> so uh, so I wouldn't sweat it, you know. Like I said, don't don't try to write bad code, but but don't be afraid of, of putting stuff out there that's just good enough. And and the reality is with React Native, if you put code out there that crashes, you can use code push and immediately patch it and fix it. And that's something you can't do if you're writing pure native. <clears throat> so the other thing I've been thinking about recently is you see sometimes online the discussions of React Native versus native or React Native versus Flutter. And it's like, which one's better? Well, this one's better, that one's better. And the reality is it doesn't matter. They're all tools to build apps. If you get down to specific features, you know, maybe React Native is better at one thing than Native, or maybe Native code is better than React Native at another different thing. If you're talking, if you're talking specifics, Okay, now now we can see which one's better. But just in generalities, it, 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 it's just like a waste of time because they're all just tools to build apps. Now, of course, if you're a freelancer 
that makes React Native apps, or if you're a company that makes React Native apps, of course you're going to go around telling everybody that React Native is better because you're incentivized to do that. You, you, you sell services to build React Native apps. You can't walk around going, ah, it's not that great or it doesn't matter. Um, so you'll see everybody that's in their camp is going to be screaming the benefits of their camp, you know. So I think the best thing to do is is to realize that they're all tools to build an app. And, and what's the point of building an app? Uh, sometimes it's easy to get caught up in, in the idea of building the app is the point to build the app, especially when you're a developer and you're the one building it. But the reality is the app is for a user. Somebody on the other end, somebody on their phone is going to download that app and use it. And the app is for them and nobody else. So if you can flip your mindset to focus on that user that has downloaded the app, not what framework, not what, you know, whether you should do these unit tests or UI tests or, or anything like that, and you focus on making something that the, the end user wants, um, I think that's a way to, you know, really stand out as a developer. And um, it's easier said than done. But it's, even though it's easier said than done, it's also very simple because all you have to do is release an app, you get feedback from the people using the app. If you can't get any feedback, then it's probably not a good idea um, or you haven't presented the idea in the right frame and you need to do something different. But once you start getting feedback from people using the app, now the path to a success, successful app is just building what people want. They tell you, hey, I, I like this feature, and then you build it. Now, of course, you need to ignore like crazy requests, but there's this idea, like there's this story that, that's probably not even true, but I've heard it multiple times from different people that said that like Henry Ford said, if I asked my customers what they wanted, they would have said faster horses instead of cars. And I've heard something similar about Steve Jobs. This idea that like the users don't know, really know what they want or they can't articulate it. And you as a developer or creator or a business person or whatever should know better than the users what they want. And, uh, I don't, I, yeah, try not to get caught in that. It seems like it's just like a little bit of an arrogant trap to get caught in because the reality is the users know what they want and they'll tell you. They, they may not articulate it exactly um, how, it, how it should be built and they may be just, you know, coming from their own perspective, of course, and not the perspective of all users and you may have to translate that a little bit really the path to a successful app, once you've hit on something that people are truly interested in, enough that they're emailing you to re request more features, is to just get feedback, build, the, build this feature they want, and then release it. And you just do that. And, mo and I think more often than not, people probably, especially if you're like a solo developer or something, you probably stop too early because it takes a couple years to, to get a really good app going, um, I think for most apps, you know, you see like things in the in the charts skyrocket after being out for a few months, but 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 that's not the reality for most people. So, anyways, that's my thoughts. Um, if you guys have any questions or 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 have anything to say or think differently than than what I'm saying, um, l leave a comment down there. Let's keep this discussion going. All right, see ya.